Here we are, Big Bucket of Chicken Podcast, Episode 1. Kev McClure, how are you? Hi, how you doing? Good. My name's Lou Rayo. It's good to see you again. I'm Kevin McClure. And I'm Lou Rayo. Wow. This we just, is amazing. This, we, we just, I, wow. just, I just did the intro, Kev. You ruined it. Oh, I'm okay. 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 Podcast over. We're done forever. Okay. I are are you sure about that? No, you know, I think we're all right. I, I got time. I can leave if you want. I mean, <laughs> if you just want to do it by yourself. You just, I think it could be interesting. You're like, well, we had a good run <laughs> for about uh, 40 seconds. and then, uh, But no, it's been a long time since we actually uh, uh, did this. Yep. And now we're actually in some fancy studio. This is amazing. Yeah. It's almost like we inherited $5 million in the last two years. I know. I feel like someone like sponsored us, you know? Like I feel like we, we should get some cool sponsors. We like should local sponsor. Chinese restaurants only though. Like this the today's episode is brought to you by Shanghai Garden. Yeah, exactly. You're going to love their food they do. This this episode is brought to you by Mavis Tires. Get tires today. <laughs> I don't even know. Does Mavis have a theme? They probably do. Do you want to start doing that? Just do like fake com- like just fake sponsors? I mean, we probably should. What if, like, fake what if, we make what if some, they hear us and then they're like, we do want to sponsor you? That'd be, that'd be awesome. Yeah. And like they write us a check and then we're, and then we're rich and we're done. I don't <laughs> have to ever want to work again. And then the podcast just becomes about tires. Like, like what, what kind of tires you got? Exactly. We become influencers, but then we become influencers. Just about, tires. Just though, garbage. Yeah. Just crap. Just like tires and just like Chinese. Or power food. tools. I can't even, I can't even eat Chinese food anymore. So I don't Why? Want to, well, cause I, I don't. What do you eat these days? Uh, from Chinese restaurants? Just anything. I Broccoli. Don't know. Just broccoli, right? And rice. It's, it's, yeah, it's, I mean, it's, it's been more. a long time. We just got to talk about that. That you know, now you're you're yeah, kind last of a vegan. Time, yeah, last time we uh, we had the podcast, I was still eating meat and I was way fatter. Now I'm not. Look, I, I'm looking at myself on the monitor. I'm not that fat anymore, Kev. I mean, I'm still fat. The confidence is oozing off of you. Like right now. for other countries, do you I'm walk still around huge? now outside and just judge people now? Because that's what I would do. Not really, not really. But I should. I should start doing that. I think I should really add to my repertoire of like. Like just like tapping people on the shoulder, like, "Hey, did you know there's another option for you?" Yeah, and then just walk away. I'm gonna do a spoiler alert right now. Uh, Kevin McClure is still getting fatter. Still getting fatter. Still just like it has the blood pressure. Uh, it's it's hanging in there. <laughs> We're getting there. <laughs> no, what does that mean? Is hanging in there a good thing about blood pressure, or do you want? Well, to- I like when they just they just ask a question about your diet. They're just like bad. Like that's that's all I could say. They're like, "Well, have you in in the last thirty days have you eaten an entire Domino's pizza and gone right to bed?" <laughs> it's like, no, I do that. Every Wait, day. did you see that? There was actually that was a question on there. It was it a question on there? And it was like, please check off what toppings it was. <laughs> like that's that's what sucked about. Just like Philly cheesesteak every time, motherfucker. No, it was, we were just talking before. So like, so I, I was just talking about how like a lot of these fast food places they're trying to get like, a little bit healthier. They're trying to like shift their gears a little bit. So I was saying like, you know, now they have this Impossible Whopper out right yeah. now. Have you tried it yet? I have had it twice. Really? And it's fucking amazing. It's amazing. It's so good. Well, all right. I've never heard you talk about Burger King like that ever in your life. All right. So when I used to eat meat, okay. I would get fast food four days. Do you a week. call those the golden years? I call them. I call them the ruffled, the the the, the ridges ruffled years. Right no, before them. the crash. Yeah, before the. Uh, okay. Well, I stopped eating meat. Like it's been over two years, and meat was actually super easy. Dairy is the nightmare. Yeah, cheese and I stuff like eat, that. I'd, I'd have a tough time. I want to eat too. a wheel of cheese. When I go to the supermarket, you know, like they have the cheese section in the supermarket. Yeah. They have literally like provolones that are the size of like Volkswagens. I so when you, before that, you would just put them into the shopping no, I would just, cart? I would just bite it. I would just bite into it like it was an apple. Like they're they're on the cutting board, like trying to cut it. You're like, fuck it. Don't even do that. Yeah, just exactly. wrap that shit up and put it in yeah, the just, shopping just, cart. I would just like canoe it out of the store. Like just grab an <laughs> orange. Like, no, I got this, guys. I'm good. Um, but no, so um, I became vegetarian. And then still kind of – not because of, like, the squealing pigs dying in the gas chambers and all that kind of stuff, which is terrible, but I, I – I'll have know. to look that up because I have no idea about in that. In France, they don't cut – they don't kill they – don't, they, they actually lower them to a gas chamber, and they scream to death. It's, it makes the bacon just – I guess. I don't know. I don't know what's going on in France. Wait a minute. So you're saying that's what makes bacon taste so I good? Don't, I guess that's what the secret okay. ingredient well, is. Well, you it's are like, – I don't know. It's mixed messages It's here, like nerve I don't, like I don't know if gas. you're trying to st- you know, just make me stop doing bacon or make me eat more. <laughs> make me eat more bacon. It's, it's hard Try to Try side pork. No. Um, <laughs> so uh, I haven't eaten meat, and then uh, I stopped eating dairy a few months ago, blah, blah. Anyway, so the Impossible Burger is this like genetically modified patch of – which I've heard is a bad thing, it's right? It's not. I Genetically don't, modified, I usually hear, is not a good I'm thing. I'm not doing any research. I'm just eating the Whopper. Right. I'm telling you right now, the Impossible Whopper, for those of you who don't eat meat, people who eat meat aren't going to want it because, for me, I don't remember what meat tastes like. I thought I did, and every time I've gotten the Impossible Whopper, I think they fucked up. What about when you're around animals and they make noises? Does that like give you flashbacks of when you no, were I doing that? Get, I don't give like, a if, like a pig like, just makes an oink noise, like do you go, oh, my God? Crackling. Is that sausage? Crackling biscuits. No, I don't... Uh, I don't. Um, I don't. I don't know. I. I. 
I guess I'm like the worst of all the vegans because I did it just because I wanted to get healthier. I mean, I was just not feeling healthy. Right. Eating, you know, meat three times a day and then like topping it off with like a pizza before I went to bed. Like, let me get my pizza sleeping pill and, you know, eat like a bacon pizza. Was it true that you had a like pizza under your pillow sometimes? I mean, it's not untrue. I mean, I don't know for sure, but there's definitely there's definitely been pizza. Like a lot of my life has just been pizza. Well, what I was talking about with the impossible Whopper, though, is like I was saying, is that like, you know, that people think it's like, oh, they're, they're having a healthier choice. Yeah, no. But who better than the people, the great people at the Burger King Corporation yeah. to really show us how to live a healthy lifestyle? Good good for them. <laughs> because that's what I'm saying. It's like whatever, all my life I thought Burger King, you know, that was like when you've hit rock bottom. You're just like, fuck it. I'm just going to get that every day and we'll see how long I last. But now it's just like people are flocking in there like this is amazing like they're like they got a new lease on life they're maybe taking up bicycling yeah. they're taking some hot pilates classes like it's going a lot better for the people that work that live at burger king they, yeah when i think health food there. i think the people at the you know the burger king corporation taco bell mcdonald's they're all just really trying to like do the right thing by us kevin i don't know what you're trying to i don't like i don't like your tone i don't like your tone <laughs> one bit but i gotta say i haven't had real like fast food in so long. No, that's good, Dan. I, you know, it's it's tough sometimes just because of the convenience. It's part so of convenient. It. It's just, now that's the problem. I did it about two weeks ago, and I was like, you know what, Lou? Once a month, you will have a possible Whopper. And then yesterday, I was just were driving. You in, were you in like your room saying this to yourself? I was in a robe, Once a month. in a robe <laughs> with a pipe, just staring at the window, like you've earned it, kid. <laughs> but uh, yesterday, I was driving by myself, and I'm on Deer Park Avenue, which, as we know, is littered with fast food restaurants. And I was like, you know what? It's raining out. Why don't you just pull over and have yourself a little snack? A little, Wait, yeah. a little snacky poop. <laughs> so, so the rain brought on the trigger right well, there? Well, I was like out and about. I'm running errands as you do as an adult. Right. And I'm like, I'm hungry. If I don't eat now. When... And that's tough when you're down that strip, you know? <sighs> it's tough for anybody. I, I mean, mean I, I, the one fast food I really miss is Taco Bell. Because I was for a while getting like the cheese quesadilla. Right. Like, let me get three of those, sir. And uh, some churros and a soda. I'm going to go sleep in the parking lot. Thanks. I'll be right back. <laughs> and... um. But the Impossible Whopper, look, it is delicious, but it's not, you know, a small, so basically the small fry and small soda, which is really a medium, it's still like 900 calories. It's still like half of the food you can have for the entire day. So if you have your Impossible Whopper, you're good as long as you're eating it, like knowing that you can only have like four, uh, four heads of broccoli for the rest of the day or something. I don't know. It's not, at, no, by no means are any of these like right. Beyond Food, like the Beyond Burger, they're not health foods at all. Not right. even a little bit. They're disgusting. They're actually horrible for you, but the argument is like, what's worse, eating a piece of an animal or eating this like processed pea protein <laughs> mush? I love the Impossible Burger, but it's definitely not a health food, not at all, not even. Yeah, food. that's the thing that I was saying. Just like the, that that misconception mm -hmm. that like you're you're all of a sudden going to be eating healthier just because it's not beef or whatever it is, and that's kind of like that shift towards all the all the different things that are going on, because you know as as you know, there's a lot of progressive things happening progressive. in the world. Uh, yeah, well. w w mainly, I, I don't know if you heard this or not, or maybe you've gone to restaurants, but apparently, uh, the straws are a big <laughs> thing for some people. We're attacking the straws. Now. No, I, I'm just saying, like, I don't know if you know this, but like, you can't get like a plastic straw anymore in a lot of places. Now I'm not saying it's, it's all over the place. Yeah, I got you. Wait another year. No, yeah, I don't yeah. know, but I don't know if you remember how this started. Um, I do, but okay. you, you want to tell it? Or yeah, you, well, there, there, was a, there was a sea turtle that they found, and they had a video. It went I viral. believe his name was Humphreys. Did they, they name the turtle? I don't know, but if, if I was going to name a turtle, I think would I would have cared if they named the turtle or if I had gotten a name. I, we'll have to check back and see if they got a name. Because if he had a name like, I don't know, like, uh, like, like Turtle Domus or something cool <laughs> like that, like I probably would have been like, oh, yeah, fuck these straws. We got we to gotta get rid of them. If they like yeah. zoomed in on the turtle's face, he was like, I train you. Yeah, so before Sarah McLaughlin shuts our show down or yeah. like does a PSA, I just want to say, so that one turtle, he had like a straw stuck up his nose. Yeah. And then like they went viral because like he was bleeding from the nostril and everybody lost their damn minds about straws. And here, here we are a couple of years later. And now like you go to like a restaurant or a bar and uh, I don't know if you've you've gotten a drink or anything like that, but they, they put this like little paper biodegradable thing in your, in your fucking uh, drink and, and like Jesus if you don't just suck that thing down yeah. that thing is gone man there's a time limit now yeah and, and, and I think you know this is my personal preference I think it make I think it tastes like shit like if you put that straw in your mouth and you're drinking oh shit it's terrible well there's different ones I mean alright so around here you could still get a straw at some places I mean Dunkin Donuts still holding out they're, okay. they're still going strong with the orange pieces of plastic but in the hand are they waiting for like one more turtle yeah I think like one more nose? turtle gets to like uh, the, the thing about that video I love the most though is it's not just 
just the turtle's got the straw. There, he gets a pair of pliers and like yanks it out of the turtle's right. head. And that, that's like, I think what. But ruined, that's the best way that, to do it, that, right? That, I mean, I, that's. I don't. Okay. Well, the, the whole thing with. Okay. Like, let's just. If talk, I'm in the ocean, let's just, let's I'm just not meeting this. turtles. I okay. Don't know. Oh. So I, I just want to let people know about this, okay? I'm not sure if they're aware. But um, a lot of things in this world are made out of plastic, yeah, okay? So Lou right now is drinking seltzer water, and it's coming from a plastic bottle. Sometimes what we do is we use plastic utensils. We use everything plastic. I'm going to need Why that. the fuck <laughs> is it just straws? Like, I just don't – I don't understand that. Like, there's so – like, we could be going after everything. But meanwhile, it's like I can't have a, a drink of Sprite at a restaurant <laughs> – Without, like, my fucking straw, like, collapsing it's on like, me in the middle of a, drinking it. They have spaghetti straws. You ever see that? They have, like, places where they actually have pieces of spaghetti. I know. Or, like, noodles. It's like a noodle straw. I think that's Is actually, that a better world, though? I, well, I feel like the noodle won't dissolve. There's 8 million tons of, like, freaking plastic particles in the ocean. And we're, like, like slapping straws out of people's <laughs> mouths because Nipsey the sea turtle got fucking banged up one day. Nipsey the sea turtle. And that's the thing for me. Like, I asked you if you do remember if seeing any other pictures of turtles that had that done. I saw one, like, I think this morning. Actually. You saw one this morning. I so you, what do you have, like, an update on your fucking phone? You well, you know, app? it's Instagram, and, like, you have no control of what's going to be okay. in the feed. And it's like, you know, it's like political crap, booties, and then, like, oh, turtles. Oh, it's Because I saw one with a plastic fork up uh, in its mouth. So, again, that's my point. It's not just... Well, the straws. It's, I, I have mixed and feelings. Why, by the way, we have other animals. Why is it just turtles? We we went with the cutest. The like, cutest, exactly. Yeah, Nobody like, cares about like a, like a sloth. A sloth. A sloth ate a ate a, ate a plastic spoon. It's like ah, whatever. He'll yeah. Okay. Moving on. Yeah, like that's the thing. Do. I hate that. Like that's we got like almost like we we got cutesied into doing all this shit. Like one sea turtle. Four years later, like the world's completely turned upside well, down. I have all right. So here's how I feel about the whole. All right. We don't obviously obviously we don't want plastic in the ocean. Okay. We all agree on that. However, if you're not smart enough not to eat. Like a like a like a white plastic fork. I mean, are you really supposed to be here anymore? Like, is that like? I mean, think about it. Let's say like human beings all of a sudden tomorrow just started drinking paint. Paint looks like fluff, like the marshmallow spread, and now dropping like flies because they're drinking like they're going to Home Depot and like <laughs> pulling the paints off the shelves and chugging it down. Like, oh, Benjamin Moore or whatever. Well, what if it had a Gatorade label on it? Exactly. Is it in you? Like, <laughs> exactly. Just, you're passed out dying. <laughs> it's what it's what plants crave. No, and. Uh, <laughs> And, uh, and are we going to like ban paint or are we just going to be like, hey, listen, those are the people who don't get to make it. That's, is the that's paint, the... is it a cute color? <laughs> is it pink? <laughs> because it, it, the cuter it is, the more likely it's going to get banned. So For the careful. 14th day in a row, another child's been found with just, you know, red death around its right. face. Like Sid it's... the pink paint can. Yeah. I mean, like, so I really feel like, uh, yeah, I mean, it sucks. But at the same time, it's like, well, maybe that's, we don't know the truth. Maybe the earth is trying to weed out people and things by use of – they have us making plastic. Are you recapping an episode of Captain Planet right now? Is that what's happening? Because I, I, that would be brilliant if you were. I mean I, I, I care as much as most people care. Not very much. You had a button once that said I care, don't you? I care. Yeah, it just said like I that. care on it. The it was, more you know, right? And it was made of plastic too, which is, which is great. <laughs> no, I just – I look at that like uh, you know everybody always – goes crazy about these straws and i always like post pictures of like the ocean with all the plastic in it <laughs> like i always go find the straw yeah like where's the straw the thing about plastic that's terrible is that every piece of plastic that ever went in the ocean is still in the ocean right. so like your toy you threw out in 1956 guess what still floating around somewhere yeah i'm Turtles still missing my peter venkman ghostbusters figure yeah, from like we, 1987 it's in that it's in that garbage island in between like the pacific ocean and like people are like what's going on here? oh peter venkman well yeah. the people think it's going to be like full-on plastic bottles but it's actually just like a soup yeah, yeah well because the like plastic is breaking thing. down and so if you're eating seafood guess what you're eating plastic yeah but then, good luck but if they season it right i'm cool exactly. <laughs> if, if, if tilapia didn't taste good i wouldn't you know that's you know that'd be a different story but it's still delicious at a nice restaurant have you know? some peppers sir. Really i have the... faith in those i have faith in some of those restaurants that they're picking out the little plastic pieces <laughs> they're like oh this is a this is a professional restaurant the maitre d's like going around oh sir that's uh Hold you, on, let me get that for you. You pick the lobsters out of the tank, and it's like, let me just take it <laughs> in the back real quick. And they just take a tweezers, and they're just like, oh, we got a little, we got a couple of, uh, you know, some, some blue and some whites and some reds in there. <laughs> Hold on, I got a syringe. Hold on, let's let's just take it out. No, I also, you know, I I just think like there's, you know, the straws are happening. Yeah, well, everyone's is upset. alcohol safe? Alcohol, I. I, I really hope so, Kev. Okay. For our sake. I, apparently it's not because what I've been reading is that like there's there's been a resurgence. A resurgence of non-alcoholic beer. <laughs> 
Like there's this is a this was is it true. ever big though? Was the alcoholic beer ever like a big deal? I think it was. Well, I think it was really like all right. So when did it come out? Probably in the early '80s. I think it's like, I think it's earlier it's like, than hey, that. But I think it, wow. I think but I think like the age of commercials. I think all right. You just remember the '80s because plus we were only been Born. on the planet yeah, since the '80s, true. so we I don't remember the remember '60s because I wasn't here. I think it was like more of a niche thing. But for me, like non-alcoholic beer was always just kind of this weird thing. You yeah. know, it's like this like fifty year old yuppie retired police officer. Like uh, who used to be an alcoholic? Yeah, used to be an alcoholic. Still wants a taste of the bubbly, but doesn't want to punch his wife. So like he's got a, <laughs> so like he's Milwaukee's best is what right. keeps the hands off the woman. I guess that's what. Like, right, that's like the slogan for duels. It should be like three divorces, two car repossessions. <laughs> exactly. Three behind on your mortgage. Oh, duels. Like now, that'd be awesome. My but, favorite part about when I first saw an alcoholic beer for the first time, I was at the store. And I was trying to buy like some real piece of shit beer, like Schaefer, you know, like six dollars yeah. for a twelve pack. Which we're, we're not too far off from what we used to buy that all yeah, the time. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> I saw Milwaukee's Best, and it's and I was like, it's even cheaper. It's like five dollars. So I was like, for that extra fifty cents, I'll get the Milwaukee's Best. But in like teeny tiny yep. fine print, it's not like advertised. Like it's like Milwaukee's Best, non real in parentheses at the bottom, and like it's like a, it's like the third clause. It says non alcoholic. So it wants to like trick you into buying it Why somehow. Why the fuck would Milwaukee's Best even give a shit? Like, what is that? Like, that's that's the uh, recovering alcoholic on a budget. Yeah, exactly. Like, what the fuck is that? Like, I want to get drunk. I don't. I wanna... That's like the most random one to do a non alcoholic. It's weird. It's beer. weird. But. I didn't know there was a resurgence. Like, what? Like, what do you? I don't know. I haven't. I haven't. Been well, to apparently, the... there's like bars in Brooklyn and Manhattan where there's just non-alcoholic bars. So it's a bar, that's, right. That sells no booze, but it pretends to sell booze. Right. Exactly. Okay. And I'm sure they're like seventeen dollars a piece. Oh, like, God. there's still Manhattan, Brooklyn prices, all that kind of it's stuff. It's like this is our apricot grapefruit beer. It's made with the tears of children. I was reading this article later, and I'll credit whoever wrote it because yeah, I, I got to find it. Not my, the, the thing that I. But there's this one thing that this just kills me, and this just like makes. Me laugh so much oh, okay. being like you know kind of an alcoholic being uh, a you know, just being like that kind of person being a booze this bag. makes me laugh it, I, I feel like grant uh, like grant torino clint eastwood sometimes when i hear this stuff yeah, like an old man. but this, Get off my this person who wrote this article about non-alcoholic beer said as millennials continue to reject the alcohol-centric culture <laughs> of our forefathers sobriety is having a moment <laughs> and some people are giving booze up entirely but rather becoming Sober curious. Oh boy, I. That's the world we live in, man. I'm that like have... that's now all of a sudden the guy that's having a good time drinking alcohol is getting judged by this asshole over here with his fucking old duels. Well, the te- Heineken has one. Can now. I see that for a second? I sure. See, I, I just want to look at the. I just want to look at the actual print of. Um... I mean, I just quoted that from Where the article, and we'll credit the article. Where's the sober curious? I want to see. That's the. That's the. One oh, right, right here. There. here. Yeah. So. Uh, again, this Sober is something curious. where, and there's there's a bar in Brooklyn. I think it's called the Getaway, and there's one in Manhattan. Um, so it's called the Getaway, but you actually don't go anywhere, right? But that's the thing too. It's like, how much fun can you have there? I'm riding the waves of Jesus' love. Yeah, like we getting turned up tonight, Lou. Like how we, we're going well, to the Getaway tonight? Like, I, what the I, fuck? I remember if you remember. Okay, so back. Like, all right, so we were born in the '80s. So like, when we say kids, we're like we're talking about like mid to late '90s. The straight edge movement, I feel like there was a period of time when like the straight edge movement yeah. kind of got huge. But we were like 16, so it was like, yeah, of course you're straight edge. You're not allowed to buy alcohol <laughs> anyway. So like, I don't know what you're talking about. Like, I'm straight edge. It's I'm like above the influence. You're not straight edge. You're 15. So like, wait three years. But anyway, so I've met people like, okay, now I'm 35, who are about my age. Most of them are recovering. So they... They don't want to drink anymore. That's cool. They don't want to do drugs anymore. That's even better. If you don't want to do it, don't do it. But they have like, you know, it's the same thing of like people who quit smoking or quit like, like I don't eat meat, but I'm not walking around going like, Kev, there's another choice. <laughs> I don't care. Do whatever the hell you want. You're all, we're all going to die. Like that cryptic message, like you, you appear in like a trench coat. But I just feel like there's so many people who are like, and I guess that's why this makes sense that it's a recurrence of a non-alcoholic beverages or, or sober curiosities, whatever you want to call it. Is because there are still people like, you know, you, you, we have these notions of like, well, those days are over and now we're better. It's 2019. And really it's the same. Yeah. It's a new, the same thing. Where they're it's just like, trying to seem like they're a better yeah. version of people, but they're, they're still the same people yeah, it's, deep it's, down. They're just judging a lot harder yeah. at, at like but their, pretending their they're father not judging. And, their, and their mother, yeah, like yeah, how they were raised. That kind of judgment. It's like when you pretend you're not judging, you're like, no, no, I found a better way. 
We can have a sober this good time. This is exactly what it is. We can have a sober good time. It's like I have a sober good time every day at work, but, but then we, I want to get boozed up. But I want to meet like the the kid who got hooked on O'Doul's early on. Like he was like every time he go in his fridge, like he like he you know the the typical choice is like Sunny D, iced tea, purple milk, stuff, and then he was just like slid it aside. What's this O'Doul's? <laughs> I want to see a guy that was like, a, I've been drinking this since I was 11. Because really, if you think about it, why the fuck not? Yeah, just, There's no alcohol in it. It's just you soda. can literally drink O'Doul's. At, I could I could put it in my my baby bottle for my child if I wanted to. I mean, and get them hooked on O'Doul's. I mean, like, I wouldn't. I mean, but child services will be called either. Technically, way. you could, right? Yeah, I, guess I mean, there's so. no alcohol in it. Yeah, well, it's just the fun, the fun of <laughs> something like without. The- the fun? It, I, w- I want the what bubbles. What the hell is the fucking slogan? I don't know. Like Rock bottom? Sober curious? We like, have this too. The term sober curious is really going to stay with me for the rest of the day. At yeah. least the rest of the day. I'm pretty... pretty well, I would... You know what I would do? I think we should go to that bar and like start coining that around there. We're like, yeah, I heard about this bar. I've been really sober curious for the last year. I have to wear seeing, a scarf seeing... though. I have, to, I have to have a silk scarf. Yeah. On you have time. to have a, yeah, you definitely have to have like that beatnik look. It's like, I'm feeling like a Shirley temple boys. What about you guys? <laughs> Version of course. <laughs> That's now, what it's just I do want to, I actually do want to go. We should actually go to a non-alcoholic. Yeah. Bar. Because what are you? All right. So, Beer makes sense. You have, okay, there was tons of non-alcoholic beers now because of the resurgence. Right. I'm sure there are people who are making like craft crap beers where it's like, this one's called Thor's Hammer. And it's like, you know, it's made of like apricots. You know, <laughs> this will sweet. knock you on your ass. Yeah, whatever. And it's got no booze in it. And it's just like for the taste. And that's whatever. But what else do you serve there? There's no alcohol. I mean, there's no like vodka behind the bar. That's because- what I mean. But th- if that's like people's version of fun. Well, I don't, I don't want to live in this world. I guess, I guess what, because right. if this really takes off and like, let's just say like half the bars in Brooklyn become non-alcoholic uh, bars, don't say half that. the bars in Manhattan become non-alcoholic no, bars. Okay. What the fuck is next? They took our straws. They took our fucking alcohol. What the fuck is next? Well, you know what it is? I don't feel like that. I don't ever feel like that. I don't feel like you said, like, like you said, I don't feel like the old man from Grand Tour. like, these I kids, do. I don't. I have a couple of kids. And However, I do have this thought every once in a while. And uh, I feel like we're in that place now where like we're in, in, a, in, a, in a conversation where the thought is coming to me where it's like, I'm so happy that I was a kid when I was a kid mm-hmm. and a teenager when I was a teenager and in my 20s when I was. Because if I was in my 20s now, you all would know who I am because I'd be on the news because we just for alcohol in general drank pretty much solid four days a week for about four and a half years. As if the world was ending. Right. Ever. Like it was like Viking funerals. Like, what's today, Tuesday? Let's drink a bottle of Devil Springs right. and uh, not feel feelings anymore. What do but you guys Meanwhile, they got non alcoholic bars called the fucking getaway. The getaway. You guys like, want to get away? You want to see a real getaway? Oh, like, yeah, just yeah. just go back to 2004. You want to get, you want to have a real getaway? Drink a fifth of, uh, of Devil Springs <laughs> and just wherever you wake up, like it's a vacation. Like it's, a, it's like black, it's like active drunk. You just kind of like lose your shoes. You kind of pass out, <laughs> but you wait. You, you know, you your you, your your brain goes to sleep, but your body goes on an adventure. It's a real getaway. I kind of feel like I want to start doing that though. With like a lot of words, like just put curious after it. Uh, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. I, I think we could really we could come up with a couple of. I'm things. feeling real pizza curious right now, <laughs> and uh, maybe just in celebration of this conversation, when we're done here, we should just go get a beer, just one beer. We should, and just take a picture of it. And just hashtag sober curious. And like, I was curious about sober, and then I remembered Bud Light existed. So yeah. Heineken has a new one. It's called 0.0. It's only like 67 calories, and that's the non alcoholic Heineken. Yeah, it's so act- that So that now that Heineken has gotten involved, you see like how it's kind of hitting a resurgence. Yeah, that's, uh, that's, that they're, that's, they're that's coming weird. Out with new ones. So it's called 0.0, yeah. and it's basically water, but it it's $9 water. It's $9 water. <laughs> which is awesome. But you're having a good time, right? <laughs> Are you having a good time? Because. <laughs> We, how I want, the fuck can you have a good time? I want to see the non-alcoholic right. beer commercial where it's like, you know, like the, how the beer commercials are just terrible in general. It's like seven guys get together and everyone has a good time and high fives. And we actually made it to the place, even though we got lost. And, you know, they beat and they drink whatever they're drinking at the time, like whatever it is. Like beer commercials in general are terrible. I want to see the non-alcoholic beer commercial where it's like, we, we drank all night and nothing happened. And right. Like, um, my wife's yelling at me. And I went to bed at 8 o'clock. Like, <laughs> what is there to do? Got to work on time. Didn't O-duel. fuck my wife last night. Went to bed at 8. Got a great night of sleep. Like, <laughs> what the, what, that's the fucking commercial, right? It's like, you won't get drunk, but you'll be plenty hydrated. Right. <laughs> I, I, don't, I, I mean, I got to be honest. Like, it's weird and it's funny. Right. But at the same time, it is actually like alien it's like a weird, it's like, yeah. I don't understand the, if you don't want to drink, why don't you try this? 
not drinking. Yeah. Like, just have a Coke. and you're, that's, It's like someone asked alcohol. you what they did last night. What'd you do last night? Oh, I made positive choices. <laughs> what'd that's you, it. What'd you, ha- what'd you do last that's night? Gonna be the, that's going to be the new norm. Like, that's a good time. I had 40 cans of having a good time. <laughs> but, like, but think about it. Like, so, like, obviously, you don't have to drink to excess. Us, and this, we're, we're excluded from that equation. Obviously, every time I drink, it's only to excess. Right. I don't drink a beer... I mean, I could have a beer, like maybe later. We'll yeah, have I can have a beer. Like if I go out, I can have a beer. But if it's too. Saturday night, it's not like I have to get. You know, that, that's not how I am. But but it helps though. In the different other moments, you know, like when you're like at your house on a Saturday night, yeah, or something yeah. Like that, and that's different. It's yeah. a different mentality. The kids are in another room. Wife's in the other room. You're like, let's just drink until we can't. Let's just say you started doing non-alcoholic beer. Yeah, I can't. Like you just brought it over. Like you were like, you were like showing it off. You were like moving (laughs) it around just to like kind of like show us like, yeah, look at this shiny new thing we got here, huh? Hey, smell it. That's a note of chocolate. Who wants to play a drinking game? It's a real oaky (laughs) afterbirth. It's a Michael (laughs) Scott quote. It's a Michael Scott quote. I'm sorry. But um, no, I I just, it is, it is like kind of like I actually do. We should actually set up a, a, a Friday night. Or Saturday night, and go. I want to go to one of these alcoholic bars. I want to walk in, and I'm gonna try. I'm gonna try really hard not to be a piece of shit and not be an asshole. I mean, I'm going to, but I'm gonna try really hard not to be like, "Hey guys, this isn't <laughs> this isn't fun. What is? How is this a business? Like, let me go in and have six or seven nothing. Yeah. Like, you know what else is an alcoholic bar? Dunkin' Donuts, Starbucks, <laughs> Pizza Hut. Because you can just go in there. There's food and drink, and it's not alcoholic. I don't understand the the you know. I understand non-alcoholic beer. It was designed for the alcoholic who needed to, you know, it's like it's like Nicorette gum. I want the nicotine. I just don't want the lung cancer. So I want to just quote one thing real quick. So Heineken 0.0. Oh, God. Um, the Heineken poster read, meet someone for a drink at the gym. <laughs> I'm sorry. Meet someone for a drink at the gym. I don't want to spit my seltzer on these microphones. Or Make barre class feel like a bar. Make barre class. What is? I don't know what barre is. Let me is see. It, is it bear? B a r r e. I don't know. It's we're hip, so unsophisticated. I guess it's some thing. I we're so uns- unsophisticated. But have a, that, have a like, drink at the gym. At the gym, like you're sucking down O'Doul's, like doing like freaking. See, squat I was thrusts. I was real excited about doing this podcast again, and you came in here with this bullshit, and now you're like making me I'm hate just the world. You, this is the, the decay of society. You're making me hate things. Since man. we haven't done the podcast in a couple of years, this is what we have to fucking look forward to. I I gotta be honest, like I'm. At least you got the Impossible Whopper, though. That's like that's like the best news you have. I, I love the Impossible yeah. Whopper, but the Impossible Whopper doesn't pretend. It's not like it's a burger. It's not a burger. It's shaped like a patty. Oh sure, but there's but, no like. But the marketing is a little look. I don't iffy. care about all that, Kev. All I care about is the sweet pickles, the onions, the lettuce, the ketchup, the mayonnaise. But you said different brands have like words like Beyond Burger. Well, there's Beyond Impossible Burger. Well, Beyond is a brand, so they have sausage burgers. Do they have Forbidden Burger. Well, I think a forbidden burger would actually be meat. Like you open it up and it's actual steak. <laughs> this is forbidden. <laughs> You're sneaking it off into the boiler room to eat it. Like she'll never know. I mean, I got to be honest. Like I like, I like all the fake, you know, cause like some of that stuff is so processed anyway. Like if you get like fake chicken patties, yep. take a chicken, fake chicken patty, the one, like a vegan chicken patty, put it next to like a Tyson's chicken patty, <laughs> bite into both of them. And I will give you a hundred dollars if you can tell me the difference because a real a chicken like Tyson's chicken patty is not chicken. It's a white substance covered in like a, 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 in, a in a in a in a fried matter that you put on the bun with cheese and ketchup and you, yeah, this is chicken. Well, they put that description on the bag. It's on the so bag. It is on the I'm bag. I'm still right. enticed by it. Right. I still yeah. like it. So Swanson's though. My, <laughs> my kids little... seem to love it. So I mean, yeah, that's the thing. Kids like I remember being a kid and eating crap like you know pizza and chicken t- tenders and fries and right. stuff like that. Now you're older and you realize like this is just it's poison. I mean, I want it. But it's it the reason why like for example like you talked about mentioning your blood pressure like you can't have it Kev like you want to have it you want to have yeah. a double bacon whatever but you know what happens when you eat that stuff it just kills you but then but we give it to our kids like I don't have any kids but I have my my niece and nephew you just like shut up and eat the salt block yeah but that's the whole thing is that you know but the generations were always like that, that yeah that's I mean, what I kids think. eat just whatever just yeah kids them up. kids always eat whatever and it's hard to like get them to really eat like nutritious things sometimes I mean unless it was the forties because my my parents had stories <laughs> well, about like the forties was a little bit different we had mom had liver we all ate liver it's like <laughs> that's why you're sad that's yeah why we like, got to go re- feed them hogs you right? have repressed memories now yeah. it's like I don't want to eat the liver because it's disgusting right but uh. Like anytime someone says during the depression, I'm like, shut up. <laughs> I was I went through a depression too. Yeah. Like, come on. Yeah, it was 2005 to 2007. Right. The crops weren't growing. Oh, yeah. shut up. Now the Great Depression for me is the fact that 
a non-alcoholic bar exists in the land of bars, like yeah. in Manhattan. So we have to go to one. But and because we, people are getting more sober curious. I mean, I just can't stop saying this. <laughs> uh, there's got to be t-shirts. There's got to be something going on with this. Well, you know what it is? We are, we definitely, I mean, buzzwords and like lingo and has cha you know, th changed throughout the decades. We are in the the golden age of like buzzwords mm -hmm. and like and like key phrases because everything has to be marketable. Yeah. It's like a tweet or like an Instagram post. Right. So like the words like Hashtags. curious. Yeah. So like curious is like something to just like tag on. Like, for example, the word safe. I've started to hate the word safe, even though like, you know, because like it has space. after. Well, it because now? it's either safe space or like, OK, for example, the word triggered is kind of a oh, it, it used to be a real thing. Yeah. And now it's to a point where. Like or even like, um, I saw something the other day, and I'm gonna try to think of it real quick. It's um, uh, not oppressed. It's a word just like that. Um, oh crap, I can't think of it now. But there's like literally feeds where people talk about how they are basically oppressed, and they give their their, their examples of oppression. I know. And when you get their examples of oppression, you're like, I don't think you know what oppression means. They don't. You don't really know. But that's but people that made is, fun of my curly but if hair. You, if you say I'm, that that you're a piece of shit, yeah, oh, yeah. Yeah. respecting Negating why your they're feelings oppressed and, yeah, 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 all that kind of just, stuff you know I mean, that's just again all these things i'm talking about is that's just a little bit of a microcosm of kind of the world yeah, we're yeah. in now but we're in like this like golden age i feel like a man out of time like i feel like i've like i've i've come to the future just to see it go to shit like this is what i feel like like i'm going back to like tell everybody like don't even fucking bother well, you know, like, and buy a lot of straws because you won't be able to get them soon. It's almost funny. It's funny for those of you guys out there who uh, who know who Doug Stanhope is. I know we know who yeah, Doug Stanhope he's is. He talks about how, like, you know, when we we're going to be the first generation who who uh, outdoes the previous generation, but in the opposite fashion. Yeah, we're like back in the day, people were like, "These kids today are crazy." Now it's like these kids today are are like a bunch of pussies. Yeah, like. When people say like, "Oh, don't go to that town," they're twenty years behind the times. Like, yeah, book me there. But that's why I feel like, uh, like, like I say, Grand Torino, Clint Eastwood. Sometimes, yeah. Well, besides the racial stuff, I mean, yeah, like the but, the crusty old man <laughs> shit, not the other yeah, stuff. Yeah, crusty old man. Yeah, like exactly, like the men, you know, like the whole thing of like you know telling men to man up. Yeah, I understand how that is can be like really toxic. Like yeah. how like people my age and me my you know me personally. When you're a, a guy, you actually there's like there's like an extreme like you can't even have like a feeling because like you're just a pussy. Yeah. But now they've taken that example of like, hey, let's not do that, and then we won't make so many shitty people. And they've gone so far to the other extreme where it's like, you know, now it's like, well, my son wears a dress and I support that. And it's like I get it, you're allowed to do those things and do it if you must, but. Yeah. I don't know. I guess I do. I, you, I mean, there is still I, something I, I wanna, endearing like, about an 80 year old man calling people a bunch of pussies. Yeah. I mean, it is there's funny. something like, you know, like, yeah, he's yeah. probably right. Like <laughs> I, I, I trust that guy's judgment. Yeah. He, so he grew up in a world where, you know, they, he had shit. He had yeah. nothing. Yeah, exactly. And he, he turned out okay. Yeah, exactly. Kind of. Well, exactly. I do agree. Like that's the whole thing. All these like movements that are out there. I think 25% of what they're doing is like rightfully placed. Like, Hey, we got to make a change. But then these weak people get their hands on it and they go like, no, we're going to go all the way to the other way and just ruin it. So like you have people who are like, you know, like, for example, now we live in a time where you can't even have a difference of opinion with most people because if you do, you're the enemy. Yeah. Hashtag you're going to be on CNN. That's kind of how it is now. Yeah, you're just... And, you know, as we continue to progress the show, well, you know, there are so many examples. Oh, yeah. That. We... So many. So many things going on. We opened like up that. all the cans of worms yeah. today, Kev. Cans yeah, this, of worms. there's cans a big of, can of worms cans of worms. on the table. But yeah, I mean, there, there's tons of stuff like that. I mean, we'll we'll definitely get into that, you know. As well, we what continue. else? What else do you have there in your your copy? Well, I just Brian. you know what it is is that you know as we talk about you know safe spaces and triggered and kind of stuff like that, you know, just even like stand up comedy has become such a hotbed discussion that you you know even even comedians are being held to this like moral standard that they have to watch what they say. Well, I mean, all right, so like we. I'm sure. I don't know if you saw the new Dave Chappelle special. I'm I've sure. seen it four times. Yeah, I think it's so. amazing. But like, so, to me to say that to you, I've watched Chappelle since the beginning. Yeah. I, mean, I remember on Def Comedy Jam. I remember yeah. watching his first half hour special. Watching his first ha hour special, mm -hmm. being amazed by how like incredible this guy is. Yeah. And, and like, so that's how far back I go. It was pre Chappelle or Chappelle show. Yeah. Um. So that's the thing is that like I feel like he could do no wrong as far as comedy goes. Yeah. Um, but the problem, definitely in the top ten of all comics of all time. But again, you know, some of the best comedians are the ones that really, you know, they kind of push the envelope. They want to just 
maybe maybe some of it's offensive to some people. But again, they're looking at it equal opportunity. Why can't we make fun of this certain exactly. type of person? Why does why does this person get occluded for being made fun of? That's the, his mentality. Yeah. Um, right. But the thing is, like, Lou, like the thing is, is I, I say like it's amazing, and like there are people out there who will go, "How do you find that amazing?" Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What 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 part of the comedy was amazing to you? Yeah, exactly. You're like that's the kind of thing. It's like, well, it made me laugh. Yeah, exactly. How about that? No, comedy oh, is the that, most democratic. Oh, yeah. oh, you found yeah. that you found it to be funny. Yeah, well, that you oh, all, so you're okay. that kind of person. So you're transphobic. You're racist. Yeah. You're all these things. It's like no, uh, he, he's he's stand up comedian. It's, it's funny. It's funny. Well, that's it. That's that's the way well, it is, but that that's not how things are. Looking. No, no, no. Now, now, like, all right. So as far as comedy goes, it's the most democratic form of entertainment there is. Right. You are talking, facing a group of people from fifteen to five thousand, and if they laugh, prob- that's it. There's no argument. If they don't laugh, that's how most comics, from Jerry Seinfeld to whoever, right. you know, the biggest comics in the world to the you know guys starting up right now. If you're not getting laughs, that's your answer. You don't need to be like, "What's wrong with that?" You know, co- comedians aren't like yelling at the audience, um, but you, all you need is like one person in that audience to like tweet, like, "Well, I can't believe he said," and then that. Well, becomes, that's what it is. But even if you, sorry to cut you off, Lou, but when you're you Read re- just like professional ah. reviews of stand-up comedy. Okay, think about it. We live in a world. Where like people are reviewing this on Rotten Tomatoes, yeah, like it's a movie. It's yeah. it's a guy doing stand up yeah, comedy, exactly. and they're picking bits and pieces of the stand up comedy, and they're focusing on that, and they're telling us not even to watch the stand up because of how offensive. This is what he said. Then he said this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then he said this about trans people. Then he went off in this tangent about gun control. It's like a transcript of. It like, is not a fucking TED talk. <laughs> Dave Chappelle didn't exactly. go there to go give a speech on the fucking White House lawn. Yeah. He's not giving the Gettysburg Address. He's doing an hour of comic or an hour of comedy about, as he says, pussy jokes. Yeah, you know, exactly. Like, that's what he's doing. Now, were you talking? Yeah. You, you mentioned that the the critics. I'm sure you you know. I, I'm sure you, uh, we talked we talked about it a little bit earlier. But like, so what they tried to do was, and I don't really understand the goal here. What was the actual goal? The what they goal. The goal to accomplish. Was, was to point out that this guy should not even be taken in at all. Like his voice should not be heard at all. Yeah, okay. Because of it. because again, he said these offensive exactly. things. And again, this isn't the first time he said these things. On a couple of no, the specials, no, of he's not. caught in flack for the same things. Yeah. Now, if you want to go watch the specials, you be your be the judge. But again, be the judge. They were trying to be the judge for and you. And just so you know, like they are on Netflix. Yeah. So like that is in and of itself. Well, that's what Dave Chappelle says. He says, you know, you clicked on my face, motherfucker. Yes. This is what, you have a choice. Exactly. You don't have to listen to but it. But just the fact that it's on Netflix, like Netflix knows this guy's going to bring money and viewers. So that's why they gave him a special. Yeah. So it, they, so basically the uh, Rotten Tomatoes, and I don't even know why Rotten Tomatoes did this because they're, anyway, they got five progressive, quote unquote progressive, Crit- uh, critics to watch it in advance and then critiqued it. They all gave him a zero across the board. All five of them said it was, you know, whatever. I didn't read their critiques. Yeah, the first couple of days the special came out, it was trending Rotten Tomatoes 0%. Now, I think it got all the way up to nine reviews, then it started getting up to like 33%. But this is just professional critics. So yeah. certain critics get the designation that they can be part of Rotten Tomatoes. It's not like every single critic, it's like you get that certain designation, you could do it. But then what happened was a week later... They opened it up, They right? opened it to the public. Yeah. So in nine reviews, negative zero. 16,000 <laughs> voted at 99% certified fresh yeah. on Rotten Tomatoes. Has anything ever been 100 on Rotten Tomatoes? I don't know, but that's pretty damn close. That's awesome. And man. that's not nine reviews. That's 16,000. Yeah, exactly. It's probably more than that. I haven't looked in a long time. That's awesome. But... All, by all rights and means, like most people that watch that special, most normal people, I don't want to say normal, but they loved it. And it was great. But that's the thing is that it still continued with the reviews. It continued with the backlash. If you read the reviews of everything, Dave Chappelle refuses to apologize. Dave Chappelle, P- uh, the, per- the producer of the R. Kelly documentary speaks out. <laughs> the producer of Finding Neverland speaks out about Dave Chappelle's yeah, yeah, comments. Yeah, other people. Every single shit. thing like was still unfavorably about Dave Chappelle. But in the meantime, it was like everybody was finding it to be hilarious, except for, you know, again, this, this it progressive. Is, it is, the thing is, this, no one wants to admit that it is a small even the outrage, right. it's a small population. And that's how it always is. But it's that's tiny. the way it works now, is that even a small percentage of people 
will really dictate what people really think about something. Yeah, and well, that's or, and, or try to. And we're too afraid to, to push back at that for fear that, oh, you're one of them too? Like, that's kind of how it is now. Yeah, well, what they do is, I mean, like, the pressure, the, you know, obviously we all know this, how it works, is you say a thing that's a bad word, or supposedly whoever. You offend some one person. They blog about it, and their little blog gets all the way up to, like, Colgate. And now Colgate wants to pull their sponsorship. And then once one sponsor pulls or threatens to pull, that's just that's basically them pretending they care. Colgate doesn't care. They want they want money from the, your show, and then all the other sponsors pretend they have to. They all well, they're gonna care. We have to pretend we care too. And then before you know it, now it's money. And when the money gets involved, that's when the, there's a big problem. Yeah, and what it looks like here too is that you know uh, there's another thing that, that that came out today, the the Joker movie. Yeah, okay. So this looks like it's gonna be another one of those things. So I haven't like, seen right it. now on Rotten Tomatoes. Um, the professional reviews are at 69%. It's not great, and it's not terrible like Dave yeah. Chappelle's was, but then the audience score right now is 92%. Yeah. Okay. But then I started reading the reviews of these professional critics, and holy shit, man. It's the same fucking thing over and over again. Read that but one. I just want to just, yeah. yeah so this is, um, <laughs> this is Richard Brody from The New Yorker. He goes, Joker is a wannabe movie that also wants to be all things to all viewers, that imitates the notion <laughs> of adding substance while only subtracting it. Joker is a viewing experience of a rare numbing emptiness. A.O. <laughs> Scott of the New York Times. Joker, an empty, foggy exercise in secondhand style <laughs> and second-rate philosophizing has none of that. Is philosophizing a word? Besoded with the notion of its own audacity as if willful unpleasantness were a form of artistic courage. The film turns out to be afraid of its own shadow, or at least of the faintest shadow of any actual relevance. <sighs> Thanks, Marcus Aurelius. People get paid to fucking write this shit. It's a it's a fucking comic book movie. Well, I gotta say one thing. So I I always hate it. I know like critics, like I, we know people who are actually movie critics. I don't like critics. Period. Because even if they're right, I don't care. Let me. I'm gonna watch it and. But think about coming out of the movie and like talking like that. Yeah, exactly. Well, the philosophizing was a little <laughs> bit off. I found it to be a foggy, grim, dark tunnel that I did not want to explore. What the, the fuck did you think it was about? Yeah, it yeah. clearly is about a guy that has mental illness. I I, I just put myself in that in like they're they're like you come out of the movie, put your popcorn bag in the garbage, you put your soda down, you get in your car, and you go. Oh, the black nothingness and the shadows. <laughs> like, I, I really feel like that is like, it's like the most contrived bullshit ever. It's like, I have to say this because this makes me sound intelligent and important and blah, 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 blah. I'm, I'm like woke as fuck by saying this and you're not at all. It's like fake woke. One more. Like, yeah, please. One. More. Uh, Jake Coyle, the Associated Press. Joker, though, is a calculatedly combustible concoction <laughs> designed like it's chaos creating character to cause a stir to provoke and distort i wish it was as radical as it thinks it is oh my god i hate that this listen. is like someone writing a review on like a fucking like famous speech is that like the wizard of oz like the, the, the great and uh, powerful oz like critique someone wrote this like with a felt tip pen there was like a feather with ink in yeah, it like <laughs> Dearest Abigail, do not see the like that. The, but that first line, like all the, the like the uh, alliteration there, like like you clittering, clankering collection of collisionous junk, a calculatedly combustible concoction. Oh my god! Like here's how I picture this. Okay, so in my mind, they're sitting at their laptop or their iPad, and they don't just like I have to get these feelings out. They are like literally like like conf you know making every like just like growing this fucking plant of shit and just like really building it's the most it's i honestly like i don't i know that the in the in i guess in the in the profession they have to like pay attention do, do have you ever like read a critique i mean don't get me wrong like sometimes they're right like the movie's not good but like i never read a, a critique everyone was like oh god i'm never gonna see this movie or no not at all. i think what's what's better is if like you don't like a movie then you go watch a movie or you go read the reviews after it and you're like, because you want people to agree with you like, yeah, at yeah, some point. Yeah. So that's kind of what I do sometimes. Um, but really the... That the, is just awful. Well, these reviews are stemming from all the controversy of the movie. Because What's the controversy Well, the controversy movie? of the movie is that, you know, the the theater in Aurora where they had that shooting okay. in Colorado, like they, the, 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 the community wrote a letter to like the makers of the film 
saying it's going to send the wrong message. So they're not even showing that movie in that theater where that shooting took place. And then like all across the country, they're adding police and security to every movie theater because they feel like there's going to be some type of a copycat thing, which again, it's, you know, possible. I now, mean, okay. So are you, does that, is that giving away plot? Is there like some kind of a movie theater shooting in the, in the movie? I think there's some type of thing that happens. At the, I'm not sure. I don't want to give any way, any spoilers. Of no, the I never movie. saw the movie. Yet. I didn't see it either. But well, what I'm saying is, is that, uh, it's almost like they feel like this is inappropriate to have a movie like this at these times. So this is kind of where these reviews come from, where like they think that they're like, pandering be- because because of all the things that have happened in this country. Like, why do we need a movie like this? And that's what these reviews are about. So I feel like they've been told, write the shit out of this movie, make it seem like you know a bleak depiction of our current society, and make people not want to see the movie. That's kind of how I feel. About or it. They have like again, they when if something does happen, all these newspapers, the New Yorker, New York Times, Wall Street Journal, they can be like, We didn't, we didn't we weren't on board with that. Right. We're on the right side of things. Well, that's the whole thing. It's that they, they think that that because this movie is out, like that they're that, that movie is just designed to do that. It's designed to trigger the crazies and to do and to, and to causing hysteria. Like that that that's the only reason that the movie was made. Not that the Joker has been around since the fucking 1930s as yeah, a character. Exactly. Nothing to do with that, that it's a 20. comic book property that DC Comics owns. Yeah. Okay, they're trying to, that's the thing, they're just trying to make it out to be this like nihilistic portrayal that will cause <laughs> mayhem on the streets. They really think that that's what this movie's going to do. Cold, dark shadow. And that's what these reviews stem from. But, but you know, that's what I, that's what I said. It's so that, I think what I'm going to do is, between now and then, I'm going to see the movie. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to have my review for next time. Okay. And I think we should, I mean, not in the next week. I mean, hopefully, like I said, we want to try to do this every Friday. But at some point in the next month, we have to go to a non-alcoholic bar. No, and that's, let's, I think we'll leave it at right here. Yeah. Is that we will, we will do that. And I will promote the shit out of it. Okay. No, we'll I'm gonna get, bring. I'm gonna have a camera. We'll get. We'll get all our friends to go. Like <laughs> all our friends that are that love to drink, love to get hammered. My birthday's next month. Let's do it. And and we'll, how about this? We'll know it's a non-alcoholic bar, but they won't know. Oh, how God. about that? Like we get there, it's like who's who's up for some uh, who's hungry daiquiris, Jal- jalapeno poppers. <laughs> All right, so that's our homework. Next week, uh, I, I would like to in the next week. I mean, it's in the theaters, right? The Joker. It just can, came out today. All right, so I can go see it like tomorrow. If I you could go to. now if you wanted to. Kev, I got things to do today. Wow. I got to go shopping. I got to get an onion. I got to get tomatoes. I'm making veggie pizza. That's my life now. It's like you want some cheese on your pizza? I'm like, yes. Um, you sound like you sound like a guy that wants to go to a non-alcoholic bar now. I mean. I'm sober curious. That's a good conversation I'm starter. I'm sober curious. That is AF. a good. Co- you know what? I'll tell you what. That is a good conversation starter at an alcoholic bar. Who's up for some vegan pizza? Just had it. What are your toppings? Wow, vivid, amazing conversations you're gonna have. The soy sauce is just to die for. Yeah. No. <laughs> So, yeah, we'll wrap it up here. Uh, this is a great first episode in a long time, Kev, and we haven't done this in a while. Wow, you're really praising yourself. I'm pra- I'm give- that's high praise. We'll we'll check the recording on that. <laughs> I like that you like put a disclaimer next episode. Uh, further review, uh, not really. Yeah, yeah. Next time we come back, like, last week was a total shit show. Turns out my mic was off the whole time. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you for tuning in to the Big Bucket of Chicken. We have we'll to wave, Kev. No one's- Can we have to wave? Can we wave? All right. We're good. We're good. All right. <laughs> the viewers at home, the live, the live feed. <laughs> Kept the live feed. That's awesome. That was cool. All right. Nice. I enjoy that very much. Yeah. I don't know how long that was. Oh, we went. I was like probably like close to 45 minutes.